Season 4 content, new Halo Reach armors that have never been in the game before, along with input-based matchmaking info on top of some Halo 4 flight and forge greatness. We'll stay tuned throughout the whole video to understand all the details. Now with the release of Season 3, a lot of people have been really excited about the additional customization for Halo 3, but there is obviously some room to be improved on. I've been seeing a lot of people in my comment sections being rather upset with the lack of gold camo for the battle rifle, as well as some vehicle skins like we have for Combat Evolved. In this development update, they specifically mention about adding more content down the road for Halo 3, and they say, short answer, yes, they plan to do that. There's going to be more stuff coming along. I'm assuming we'll see more of this happen after the launch of Halo 4 on PC, as obviously that's the main point of focus when it comes to the MCC right now, but there is going to be support beyond Halo 4, there's going to be additional seasons beyond Halo 4 as well. That's when I would expect to see this additional content come in, though they did hint at more content coming in for Season 4, but there is some special kind of hinted additional customization coming in for you guys and i want to say it right here what they said on the blog post saying there are some additional areas we are exploring so investigations are definitely underway and we're coming to it with a lot of ideas including looking at unreleased content but we are unsure of the technical feasibility of bringing that to work in the mcc like the redacted armor pieces we're excited, but we want to keep some of the redacted stuff close to our chests as we figure out just how realistic it is. We do not want to overpromise stuff, but we are definitely taking a look. Now, they mentioned this redacted armor stuff previously and some other redacted things, and I had the assumption that we're talking about GRD, as that was the cut content that was featured in a DLC expansion promo picture for reach back in the day but just never made it into the game now unless they're referring to something else i think they actually kind of spilled the beans here in this blog update is that the grd helmet looks to be coming into halo reach we also have a cool new picture of the exo chest piece as well for halo reach this is cut content that just didn't quite make it into the game it looks like they're going to be adding in which is pretty awesome but at least they do mention here as well specifically mentioning about there are other pieces like other helmets and additional chest pieces that they were able to basically unearth finish polish up and get into a future update in season. Well, this is some really cool stuff, knowing that 343 is taking the time to kind of dig up some of the content that might have just been cut from the game that's still in the files and things like that that can probably polish up and throw into the game. This is pretty awesome. Really excited about this. This is long time rumored uh, for additional customization coming into the game. And we knew it was in the game files. So it was really released previously by the community that it's there. It just needs like, you know, some polish and work on it. And it looks like 343 is doing just that. But it's not just the Spartans are getting some love the elites are getting some love as well as they mentioned they're bringing armor effects back for the elites along with new customization of chest pieces paired with prosthetic arms so you can make your own jega in halo reach that's pretty freaking awesome and reading through this blog update they do seem to really focus on customization and giving more players more options to express themselves in their game and one thing they actually do mention is much like how in halo rage you actually could view each person's customization in a lobby in a pre-game match or something like that well it sounds like they might be trying to do something similar to that they did mention that in other places they would like to add more customization and to showcase your character in the pre and post match games to just show off more customization like you did like you couldn't reach which is pretty freaking awesome again this is nothing that's in development right now but it's something that they are looking forward to do hopefully in the future with mcc now we have some news on input based matchmaking and we have some screenshots actually what that is actually going to look like if you remember in the previous development update they do mention how they're looking to implement this in a more playlist by playlist kind of feature so basically modes like uh firefight and like infection your very social modes action sack i'm sure as well uh, there'll be free free flowing you know cross play no problem right there absolutely no restrictions but when you get to more competitive modes i'm assuming like your team slayers your hardcore matches and things like that you'll be matching mainly just against the same input device that you're using so basically taking that option away from the player to say i want input based matchmaker or not is that they're going to be just matching you per playlist level of how much how strict the input based matchmaking will be and to quote exactly what 343 said here so this is not going to be a toggle of i only want this input but it's going to be determined per playlist 
for players, which is correct. But then looking down, I saw this screenshot here under networking, you can enable input-based matchmaking. And you also have the option of platform-based matchmaking on top of that, which is pretty awesome. So it still seems like there's gonna be that input-based matchmaking and it's gonna be an option whether or not you wanna opt into it or not. As in, you can have it disabled, can play just like how it is right now and just kind of deal with it as it is. But you can enable input-based matchmaking and so for some playlists it won't affect you at all like said like infection or for firefight but when you want to play more competitive modes and having different input devices certainly can give you different advantages or disadvantages you can enable it there it seems like as well as each platform if you want to just turn off cross play all together which i kind of thought that was kind of the point of making it a per playlist thing to make it so then there wouldn't be this division of players within the MCC, because we know it's a small player base. I just hope that this ends up overall working well for everyone. You can also select your preferred input device as well as either your gamepad or AKA controller or mouse and keyboard as well. Now, another big feature I know a lot of people are excited about is gonna be the custom game browser. This is something they so you can play custom games just like you can in Halo 5, but also in Halo MCC. Uh, though they do mention how they're still working on it and it's not going to be released with Halo 4. Uh, it even, they even seem to be hinting at possibly releasing the custom game browser possibly after 2021 uh, because they mentioned some features might slip until that year time frame. Uh, though I still hold strong, I think this will release in 2020 as they previously mentioned. Uh, that they do say one thing is that they do plan to flight it. And with guarantee, I will be making content on the custom game browser, guys, once they do go into flighting process for that. And they do mention how they're looking to kind of roll it out in stages as a per game basis, essentially. So then you can release it for that game, see how people like it and play with it. And then on top of that, be able to reiterate on it and improve it to see how it, the community has any feedback on it. So when custom game browser comes to the MCC, it's most likely going to be for like a specific game. My guess probably either Halo 3 or Halo Reach. My guess Halo 3 just because it's the most popular one out there. And we made an entire video deep diving into everything they mentioned about the custom game browser. Check out that video in the description down below guys if you want to check out that one after watching this one obviously. Also coming with Halo 4 guys, there is a Thorge update coming for this as well. Essentially expanding the amount of objects you have to use within Halo 4's Forge and also expanding the budget on top of that as well as adding a new feature the trait zone editing like we had in Halo 2 Anniversary is now going to be brought into Halo 4 as well. They mentioned how some of these objects are pulled from multiplayer maps others from the campaign or even Spartan Ops on top of that saying how some will allow forgers to add visual flair to their maps while others are new toys with exciting gameplay opportunities and looking at this Forge screenshot, guys, you look on the right side, that's a pelican with the hatches open. Now, I'm not sure if this is like a taken from Spartan Ops or campaign kind of just stationary item, but if you can fly a pelican in Halo 4, well, you got my attention then. Obviously, if anyone can confirm that that's an object that's just kind of in the world or something like that in the comment section, Please leave it in the comment section down below. I'll make sure to pin it for everyone. Continuing about Forge, they do mention about how a lot of requests have been, well, why not make all the Forge objects available for every map in the game? Because if you think you'd just be just copy pasta over. Well, the thing is that each Forge map has its own items. And if you want the next map over, you have to reload all those items again. So that basically just doubles each time you add more objects. And they basically stated here that if you added every object in every map, in the MCC for Forge, the game would be over 400 gigabytes large. Again, it's not probably the most effective way to go about doing it, but you know what? These games were released on a per game basis and they were never intended to be added in as a grand total package. And so you can see how like the frameworks of how these games are built, that some of it can be kind of old coding that can kind of get in the way of uh, truly getting to the true potential this game has to offer. Now they do mention about Halo 4 flighting that should be happening in this month of October. If you guys want to catch that video, I did make a detailed video talking about that whole thing in the description down below, guys. Check out that description. Trust me, you got some good content and you want to check out on. And of course, it's not too late to sign up to become a Halo Insider to join the in Halo Insider program. And if you want to join in on the flighting process for Halo 4, definitely go in and sign up there, guys. Literally just Google Halo Insider Program. The first link will take you right to where you need to go. And also, if you've recently updated your PC specs, and a lot of people have picked up 3070s and 3080s recently, 
you get an update there as well. So make sure you do that. Now they do also talk about some actively in development items as well as in design items and things that have been kind of put on the back burner for now. We'll make sure that put that in another video coming after this one, guys. So make sure you subscribe to the channel to know when that video goes live. So a pretty solid month end update, guys. Nothing too game shattering or new things that are coming away besides the GRD helmet announcement, which is pretty awesome. If you like these news and informational videos, please make sure to tap that like button. Check out the videos on the screen right over here. If you want to say content for me, I got a link to all my news and informational videos if you've been out of the loop for the last few days or so. Thank you so much for watching. Greatly appreciate it. I'll catch you on the next one. Peace out.